in these next tutorials, what we're going to do is I'm going to go through three problems, um, and it's going to be three different videos. But this is our first problem, in which we're going to solve for um, absolute inequality. And what we do is we need to solve for the variable, in which case, solve for x, and then we're going to graph our solution. All right, graph the solution. You should. Okay. Um, when you solve in any type of absolute value problem, the key thing, if you like that tutorial, is um, you currently need to have two different solutions, all right? Two different equations I'm going to do. Now, um, with the inequalities, you're either going to have an end statement or an or statement. An end statement or an or statement. Now, when you have an absolute value which is going to be less than, or greater than or equal to a value, in this case, one, this is what we refer to, or we're going to get an or statement. So whenever we have the absolute value, like so, either equal to or um, where the absolute value is greater than or equal to, it's going to be or statement. Now, when you create an or statement, that means you're going to have two different values, okay, two different values. And you can set this up even with an end statement, but you're going to have to do a little combining. But let's let's figure this out and let's go through and um, find this answer. So um, with the absolute value, we're going to have an x minus five. So we're going to have our positive value, and then we're going to have our x minus five. And we have to switch the signs because we're going to switch the um, number value. We're going to make the opposite. So whenever you do opposite, um, you have to switch the sign. That's the key thing when you talk about inequality. Whenever you take the opposite or divide by a negative or multiply by a negative, um, you have to switch the sign um, of that inequality. So after we create our two values, what we're going to do is we're going to solve them. In this case, it's not too hard. I have x is going to be greater than or equal to 6. We're going to add that to the other side. And this one right here, we're going to have x is going to be less than or equal to, and 5, we'll have 4. Oops, wrong way. It's going to be less than or equal to 4. Now, we're going to now graph this value. All right, and here, I'm going to put that right there at 0. Um, we're going to start over here, and x has to be greater than 6. So we go over here in uh, 2, 4, 6. All right, this is going to be a closed circle. That's equal to, all right, closed mean equal to, all right, closed value, all right, and we're going to have all values which are going to be greater than 6, so we're going to go in that direction, all right. For our other one, we're going to have a all x values, once again, this is closed, so it's equal to, we're going to start right here, and then it's going to be all x values less than, we can follow the arrow right here, all right, less than or equal to 4. Because we have this gap, this is an OR statement, so our answer is going to be, and here's let me put this first one, all right, this one before the other one, so we can go over here, and then we go, all right, x can be less than or equal to 4, or x can be greater than or equal to 6, and that's normally a couple of right here, but that's how you solve these things. All right, we're going to go through another one, I think I have a little bit of time. So that's our first one. We'll go through one more and then I'll save another one a little bit better. Okay. This is what we have. Um, another inequality. In this case, what we have is um, one where we have it is greater than. So actually value is less than, but we have 25, which is greater than that. Now, once again, this, now unlike the or statement, this is what we refer to as the end statement. The end is whenever you have the absolute value, which is going to be less than or equal to or less than that value. Okay, that's an end statement. If you're not sure, all right, and you can't keep straight the end or or statements, this is what I do like is um, just create, all right, you have an absolute value. When you create an absolute value, you have to create two different equations. So in this case, we're going to solve for z. z, and we're going to graph it. Graph solutions. You can number line. So we have six, so we're going to create two different statements. With our absolute value, so we have 6z plus 5. Um, that's going to be less than or equal to 25. And we're going to go over here and we have 6z plus 5. And now we just switch this sign because I'm going to make this a negative 25. So once again, whenever you change the opposite um, in inequality, you have to change the sign. Now for each one of these, we're going to solve it. We're going to subtract 5 to the side, so we have 20 and 6z um, divide by 6. And what we have is 26, which can be reduced to um, 10 thirds. That's our first one. And over here, we're going to do the same thing. So we only have negative 30, 6z, divided 
divide by 6. We don't do the sign because we're dividing by a positive number. All right, that's going to be negative 5. And so what do we got here? All right. Now, when you see this, we can graph it, and you can see if it's an end or or statement. So if you didn't know, this would be an end statement. And end statements mean that we can combine them together. Now, just to verify this, I'm going to graph this. So our z values, oops, our z axis, we're going to start at negative 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5. It's going to be all values. All right, this is closed again. But it's equal to it's a closed circle. And all values are going to be greater than that. Run this way. And what we have over here is z or 10 or 10 thirds, which is about three and one third, or three and one third, so three thirds. So we'll just go over here and it's going to be closed. It's going to be 10 thirds. It's going to be five. All right. And these are going to be less than that. Notice how these overlap. I'll make this a different color. You can see a little better. Because these two overlap, they can't go past these values. And so that's how whenever you have a overlapping or conjoining statement, this is an end statement. This is an end statement. We can then combine these by making v, take the lesser one first. Negative 5 is going to be less than or equal to z, which is then going to be less than or equal to 10 thirds. All right. And that is our end statement. All right. We went through two different equations, all right, two different things, all right, where we had one that was a or statement, we had one that was an end statement, and I hope this helps you out in doing the rest of your problems. I'm going to do one more tutorial, but I'm going to say that for another one more.